On this video, we're going to look at the segments that have an outside intersection. So when the segments intersect outside the circle, they always have a whole times external equals whole times external relationship. So for number four, we have a secant intersecting another secant outside the circle. So here's where we have that whole times external relationship. So remember, one thing you have to be careful about is when you find the whole length of some of the secants, if you're not given it, you're going to have to add the parts together to get the whole length. But you're multiplying by the external parts. So just be careful when to add and when to multiply. For, so for this secant, um, our value of x represents that whole length. And so we'd have x times the external part, which is 12. On the other secant, we're given the external and internal parts, so we have to add them together to get the whole length of that secant to be 40. So we'd have 40 times the external part, which is 15. So of course, on the left side of the um, equation, 12 times x is just 12x. 40 times 15 is 600. So when we divide both sides by 12, we get x equals 50. And that's all we were asked to do, is just find that whole length um, there. If we were asked for the internal part, remember you'd have to take the whole and subtract the part you know. And so you would get this length to be 38. The 38 and the 12 make the 50 together. On number 5, we have a secant and another secant, since it's containing two points on the circle, intersecting outside the circle. So again, we have the whole times external equals whole times external relationship. So on this secant, again, to find the whole length, we have to add these two parts together. 10 plus 6 is 16, so the whole is 16. The external part is the 6, and we're going to set that equal to whole times external of the other secant. When we find the whole length here, remember that's not 8x. You're adding to find the whole length. So x plus 8 is the whole length. And so to multiply that by the external, we're going to put that binomial in parentheses and multiply it by the external part of 8, so we remember to distribute. So the 16 times 6 gives us 96 on the left side. On the right side, 8 times x is 8x, plus 8 times 8, which is 64. So when we solve that two-step equation, we would subtract 64 from both sides get 32 equals 8x, and dividing both sides by 8, we would get x equals 4. And that's all we were asked to do here, is find this whole, that um, value of x, which is 4. The next external relationship is the number 6. Here we have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside the circle. So it's still a whole times external relationship. It's just with the tangent, the whole length of the tangent segment and the external part are going to be the same number. So it's going to be that number times itself or that number squared. Um, for the secant here, the whole length, don't forget you're going to have to add those parts together to get the whole length. So that's not 2x, that's 2 plus x or x plus 2. It doesn't matter what order. And so you have the whole length being the 2 plus x here being multiplied by the external part, which is the 2. So when you um, have that 4 times 4, which is 4 squared, for the whole times external here, equaling the whole, which is x plus 2, times the external part of 2 here, you would need to distribute the 2. 4 squared is 16. 2 times x is 2x, plus 2 times 2 is 4. Subtracting 4 from both sides, and then dividing both sides by 2, we would get x equals 6. And that's all you're asked to do. The next internal, um, inter or external, sorry, um, intersection is number 7. This tangent and this secant intersect outside the circle. So we have a whole times external relationship. Again, when you have a whole times external for the tangent, the whole and the external are going to be the same number. So it's going to be x times itself, which is x squared. When you do whole times external of the secant, your whole length is going to be the addition of the parts. 4 plus 5 is 9. 
So you would have the x times x is x squared for the tangent. Whole times external would be the 9 times the 4 um, here. So that question mark would be your 9. So you would have x squared equals 4 times 9, which is 36. And undo the squaring to get x by itself by taking the square root of both sides and getting x equals 6. So that's all you're asked to do on that one. The next external intersection or outside intersection is number 8. We have a secant and a tangent intersecting outside the circle. So again, we have that whole times external. The whole length of the secant, remember, is the sum of the parts. So it would be x plus 3 for the whole length times the external part, which in this case is the x. And then on the other side of the equation, you have your whole times your external would be the 2 times itself, or 2 squared. So if you're filling in these blanks, this would be the whole length of the secant, and this would be the tangent times itself, or whole times external. So when you distribute here, x times x, remember when you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add those exponents, so that would be x squared, and then x times 3 is 3x. On the other side, you have 2 squared, which is 4. So in this problem, you have a quadratic, and it doesn't go away because you don't, don't have another x squared on the other side. So to solve, remember you want everything on one side of the equation set equal to 0, and you want your x squared to be positive. So you want to keep x squared on this side, which means you want the 4 over there with it. So to get the 4 um, away from this side and get it equal to 0, you're going to subtract 4 from both sides. So 4 and the 3x are not like terms, so you're going to have x squared plus 3x minus 4 on the left side. You have three terms because none of them are like terms. And 4 minus 4 equals 0 on the right side. So this is when you factor a, a quadratic trinomial into two binomial factors set equal to 0. So the first terms would multiply together to get the x squared, so they would each be an x. And then these terms you want to multiply to get negative 4. Well, there's two factor pairs that multiply to get 4, 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. For them to multiply to get a negative 4, one of them has to be negative. So you'd have negative 1 and positive 4 are positive 1 and negative 4. Negative 2 and positive 2 doesn't have another option. One of the twos has to be negative and one has to be positive. So these are the three factor pairs that would work so that you get a product of negative 4. But when you do the x times this number and this number times x, you have like terms that have to combine to get a positive 3x. So you're looking for which factor pair would add to get a positive 3. And that's the negative 1 and positive 4. So this would be minus 1 and plus 4. You can check it by distributing x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. 4x and negative 1x make the positive 3x. And then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So now you're using the zero product property that says if you have two numbers that multiply to zero, then one of those numbers has to be zero. So either the x minus 1 would equal zero, or x plus 4 equals 0. So you're just solving those two equations. So you'd get x equals 1 here, and you would get x equals negative 4 here. <coughs> now, the x being negative 4 doesn't make sense. You can't have a, ne um, a negative segment length. So this is the only solution that makes sense in the problem, is for this part to be 1. So that's the solution on that after you factor that problem. The next problem with the outside intersection is number 11. So we have a secant and a secant intersecting outside the circle. So be careful with these numbers. That's showing from this point to this point is the 45. This point to this point is the 50. So we know that the relationship is whole times external when we have an outside intersection. So the whole length of the secant is given. It's 45. We're going to multiply it by the external part, which is given as x. On the other secant, the whole length is given as 50. And we're going to multiply it by the external part, which is 27. So 45 times x, of course, is 
45x. The 50 times the 27 will give us 1,350. So we would divide both sides by 45 to solve for x and get x equals 30. The next outside intersection is number 12. We have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside the circle. So when we do whole times the external of a tangent, remember the whole and the external are the same t thing. So you're multiplying a number by itself or squaring that number. And for the secant, the whole length here, don't forget to add those parts. So 7 plus 9 would give you a whole length of the secant to be 16 times the external part, which is 9. So um, 16 times 9 gives us uh, 144. And so then when we undo the squaring by taking the square root and doing that to both sides to keep it balanced, we get our x to be 12. The next um, external intersection is number 13. We have a secant and another secant intersecting outside the circle. So when we do whole times external for the relationship, for this secant, for the whole length, don't forget we have to add those parts. So 12 plus 23 is 35. For the whole length of this secant, adding those parts is not 15x, it's 15 plus x. So don't forget to add to get the whole length. So we'd have the whole being 35 times the external part, which is 12, equaling the whole, which is the 15 plus x, times the external part of 15. Remember to put that binomial in parentheses to remind you to distribute that 15. So on the left side, the 35 times the 12 is 420. On the right side, 15 times 15 is 225, plus 15 times x is 15x. So then we would subtract the 225 from both sides and get 195 equals 15x, and then divide both sides by 15. And so we would get x equals 13. The next outside intersection that we get is number 17. So we have two secants that intersect outside the circle. So again, we have a whole times external relationship. So for TV, that secant, when we find the whole length, and we remember we add to find that, it'd be 6 plus 2x. And then we would multiply that binomial in parentheses by the external part, which is a 6. So remembering to distribute. On the other secant, we look at some tick marks here showing congruence. So if f to s is 8, t to f is also 8. So the whole length of that secant is 8 plus 8, which is 16, times the external part, which is 8. So when we distribute, the 6 times 6 is 36, plus 6 times 2x is 12x. On the right side, 16 times 8 is 128. So when we subtract 36 from both sides, we get 12x equals 92. And dividing both sides by 12, we get a um, repeating decimal, but our directions tell us to round to the nearest tenth. So when you get that um, 9.666 repeating and rounding to the nearest tenth, you look next door, and since that's bigger, 5 or bigger, this 6 becomes a 7. I'm sorry, that's a 7 right there. On a nine. So your x is approximately 7.7. Um, that 6 being 5 or more means add one more to the 6, so you get your x to be approximately 7.7. .7. The next outside intersection is number 18. You have a secant and a tangent intersecting outside the circle. So when you do your whole times external relationship, the whole length of secant LR is the 5.2 plus x, remember to add, and since that's a binomial, I'm going to put it in parentheses to multiply it by the external part, which is 5.2, so that I remember to distribute. 
on the tangent, the whole and the external are both 7.3, so that means the 7.3 is being squared. So when you distribute the 5.2, you have 5.2 times 5.2, giving you 27.04. 5.2 times x is 5.2x. And on the right side, the 7.3 times itself, or 7.3 squared, is 53.29. So you would subtract the 27.04 from both sides and get the 5.2x equals 26.25 and then divide both sides by the 5.2. And um, again, we're rounding, so even though you get a decimal that is um, non-repeating, but non-ending here, just keeps going, we're rounding to the nearest tenth. Next door is a four, so since it's less than five, that means to leave this number. It doesn't mean that your x is exactly five, so remember, you need that zero in the tenths place. So your x is approximately 5.0. That zero is needed. The next outside intersection is for number 20. You have a secant and secant intersecting outside the circle. So you have whole times external. Your whole length of this secant, when you add those, is x plus 4. It's a binomial, so you're going to put it in parentheses when you multiply it by the external part, which is 4 to remind you to distribute. On the other secant, the whole length is 6 plus 7, which is 13, times the external part, which is 7. So when you distribute the 4, you get 4x plus 16 equals the 13 times the 7 is, um, sorry, is 91, and then solve that two-step equation, subtracting 16 from both sides gives you 4x equals 75 and then dividing both sides by 4 gives you a terminating um, decimal so we need to look at our directions there and it doesn't say to round to the nearest tenth if necessary it just says flat out round to the nearest tenth so you're not going to leave it as the 18.75 you're rounding to the nearest tenth that 5 tells you to add one more to the 7, so your answer is approximately 18.8. .8. So that's the difference between rounding to the nearest tenth and rounding to the nearest tenth if necessary. If it said if necessary, we would keep that answer because it was not necessary to round, but since it doesn't, we do round to the 18.8. .8. Our next external um, um, intersection is on 21. We have a secant and a tangent intersecting outside the circle. So we have whole times external. The whole length here, remember you add. So when you add x plus 2 to 14, you can combine your like terms of 2 and 14, which means that's x plus 16. So you would have x plus 16 as your whole put it in parentheses since it's a binomial, multiply it by the external part, which is 14. The whole times external of the tangent is the 16 times itself, or 16 squared. So when you distribute the 14, 14 times x is 14x, the 14 times the 16 is 224, and the 16 squared is 256. So subtracting 224, from both sides gives us 14x equals 32 and dividing both sides by 14 gives us a non-terminating non-repeating decimal that's 2.2857 and so on so rounding to the nearest tenth we look next door since that's a 5 or bigger that 2 becomes a 3 so your x is approximately 2.3 when you round it to the nearest tenth the next um, outside intersection is number 22. You have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside the circle. So the whole times external relationship for the secant, when you add the 5x and 9, that's 5x plus 9, which is a binomial. Put it in parentheses to multiply by the external part of 9, reminding yourself to distribute. On the tangent, the whole and external are both 13, 
so 13 times itself or 13 squared. 9 times 5x is 45x. 9 times 9 is 81. 13 squared is 169. So the first thing you would do is subtract the 81 from both sides and get 45x equals 88 and then divide both sides by 45. So you get a repeating decimal, it's 1.9555 and keeps repeating that 5. But since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, this is the tenths position, so this is one that's a little tricky. Since this is 5 or bigger, it means to round this up. Well, when you round a 9 up, it rounds to a 10, which means there's a 0 that goes in the tenths place and adding 1 to the um, 1 spot. So that actually rounds to 2.8. Zero. You wouldn't say it rounds to 2 since you're rounding to the nearest tenth. You need the 0 in the tenths position. The last one that has an outside intersection is number 24. We have two secants intersecting outside the circle, so we have whole times external relationships. So the whole length of this secant is the addition of the x plus 3 and the 6. So when you combine the like terms to those constants, you get x plus 9 is the whole. Since it's a binomial, put it in parentheses when you, when you multiply it by the external. That reminds you to distribute. The whole length of the other, sorry, my light went off. The whole length of the other secant is the 4x plus 2 in parentheses when you multiply it by the external, which is 2, again reminding you to distribute. So 6 times x is 6x, 6 times 9 is 54, 2 times 4x is 8x, 2 times 2 is 4. We have variables on both sides, so we'll get our variables on the same side by subtracting 6x from both sides. So now we have the 54 equals 2x plus 4, undoing addition with subtraction, and then undoing multiplication with division. We get x equals 25. Those are all the problems that have an outside intersection and therefore have the whole times external relationship.